Good evening, viewers, and welcome to One Exclusive. Now, with us in studio this evening is the president to the Republican Party, Mr. Hink Mudge. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Now, um, before we get to your party's mandate and your challenges, let's address the elephant in the room. Um, the Republican Party has been criticized for being a white party. Is it a white party? And what has happened in the leadership since its founding to, you know, demonstrate <coughs> that it is not? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a very important question, although I thought that this has been dealt with already. Um, but what's important is to, is to know where we come from. Uh, you will remember that we broke away from the National, Part National Party uh, in 1977. Um, the Apartheid Party, as I want to call it, uh, because we were no longer happy with the Apartheid system. We wanted it to be changed. We want Namibia to become independent and not being ruled by South Africa. We called it the Republican Party. It was not the Democratic Alliance or the Democratic Party or the Christian Democrats or whatever the case may be. We called it the Republican Party in 1977 already because we, we wanted Namibia to become independent, to become a republic. That is where the name comes from. So there was all the, all the uh, propaganda that was made at some stage and even now that we were against independence uh, or Namibia becoming independent, it is absolutely untrue. Uh, as hard as Swapo fought outside the country, we fought inside the country. Uh, I mean, we in the Republican Party at that stage, especially our family, we were called names that I cannot, I cannot uh, mention that on this program. Uh, it, was, it was difficult for us, but we, we kept on and uh, fortunately we succeeded. Now at that time when the Republican Party was founded, um, it, was, uh, it was directly after the uh, Turnala Conference and the Turnala Conference was um, attended by political parties inside Namibia. Uh, and it was obviously uh, the Damara people from the Damara speaking party, that is Swapduf, if I can remember correctly, Nudo from the Heru speaking community, um, and we can go on. But, but in that, in that uh, alliance, uh, the Republican Party initially um, was the party that represented the whites. And when the DTA become the DTA of Namibia, that, if I'm not mistaken, that was towards the end of the 90s, um, the Republican Party was no longer a party for whites only. People could, could uh, enroll with whatever party they wanted to. Then the, re sorry, just to clarify to the viewers, then the Republican Party was still a part of the DTA under that yes, alliance. Yes. yes, the Republican Party remained part of the DTA. Now, with the first election in 1990, the DTA, I think, got 24 seats in Parliament. Uh, it was quite a formidable opposition, uh, representing a, a lot of people in Namibia, inside Namibia. <clears throat> but unfortunately, towards the end of the 90s, beginning of 2000, we were of the opinion that, that the DTA did not play the role of the opposition as they should. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, what, 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 what happens then, and it's still happening now, is that people are too worried about their position. And all they want to do is to go to Parliament, they want to be called honourable, and what goes with that, earn a salary and all the benefits that they, that they can get. And then they forget about the promises they made to the people who put them there. Mm. And, and we were of the opinion at that stage that that was the case with the DTA. And then in 2000, we decided to speak to our members of the Republican Party and we decided to, to leave the DTA and to try and become a constructive opposition uh, where we could make uh, contributions uh, and not focus on pity politics and emotional stuff. And uh, I know that we were blamed because of that, uh, but that was the reason. There, there was no other reason. <clears throat> Myself, I never had any ambition to be a politician. Um, I did that 
merely because I, want, I thought I could make a contribution, especially in a young dem democracy. In fact, in the, at the first Congress of the Republican Party, I was not even available for presidency. I was elected vice president, <clears throat> but the president that we, that we elected at that stage, Pete Boltman, was then also the governor of the Hadap region. And although we decided that we're going to leave the DTA, uh, he then turned around and he said, no, he's not willing to do that. So, and then he was asked to resign as president of the Republican Party. And I was then basically, I became the president by default. If so you call so it some that. people believe that you are <coughs> clinging to power, but there was really a vacuum that you had to step up and fill. Yeah. All right. Now, since then, um, I think the first Congress that we had was in 2004. Uh, the majority of the, the delegates were not white people. I can tell you that the whites never represented more than 20% of the delegates uh, at the Congresses. So I was never elected by the white people as the president of the Republican Party. And, and I'm very proud of that. Um, that is maybe one of the reasons why I, despite threats in the beginning that I don't want to be the president, I don't want to be involved in politics anymore. Uh, a number of people would, uh, came to me and, and requested me to remain uh, the president. And, uh, and I mean, since I had this dream to make some sort of a contribution, I felt I cannot let them down. Um, and that is why at each and every Congress I was elected as president. And I don't want, it's nothing to brag about, but the fact is I was always elected unanimously. Uh, there was no other candidates, maybe for whatever the reason may be. And, and then we come to where we are now. Um, we were quite quiet at the Republican Party during the last 18 months to two years. And, and once again, I thought that um, there must be a way out uh, for me. I didn't just want to resign and carry on with my own business as a property developer. Um, and that is why we, we then started to talk quite some time ago to the, the, to the RDP. I spoke to, to Mr. Amutenya long before they even left Swapo because I, I, I just knew that uh, the opposition in Namibia as it was, could not make any real contribution uh, because we were totally fragmented. Um, and I thought that a coalition between us and the RDP would be the ideal one, which I still believe could have been the case. But unfortunately, uh, there were too, too many hidden agendas. There were too many people in the RDP uh, also in the leadership, and I'm not talking about Mr. Amutenya. I've got a lot of respect for him. We had a wonderful relationship. Um, but there were too many other people uh, and leaders in the RDP who I think felt, maybe felt a bit threatened. Um, we never, when we started the negotiations also, and which could have been a mistake, I was blamed for that by my own people. Uh, during the initial negotiations, I never... Um, I tried to, 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 to uh, negotiate a position for myself in the coalition. Uh, many people said I should have been the vice president of that coalition, which I presume would have been the right thing to do. Yeah. But I never, I never wanted that to be the case. I, um, I actually thought <clears throat> that that would be my exit strategy. In other words, just get the two parties together uh, and then um, and then when everything is running well for me to leave politics and, uh, and uh, since I was quite convinced that Mr. Amutenya was able to, to run this opposition effectively. Now, unfortunately, as we know now that even him uh, had serious problems within the RDP where he was undermined, his leadership was undermined and so on and so forth. And even in the first election that we entered into, I think it was in 2005. No, 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 no. no. Whenever, um, in 2010, um, with the local authorities, regional local authority elections, um, 
our people, our organizers and senior people in the party was overlooked completely by, by those in the RDP and were not nominated as candidates and so on. So they became very unhappy about the situation. So, so the, just, just to sum it up, then the, Republic, uh, the Republican Party wanted to become part of the ADP, RDP, but you feel that you were sidelined with yeah, yeah. decision making. Yeah, yeah. Right. but not by Mr. Mutenya. Right. Not by him. Yeah. I mean, we, we, could, uh, we, we could have taken a stronger stance on that, but, but you know, you, you always feel maybe that's a, a situation that will pass, um, that he would take. Uh, maybe a stronger grip on the party and, uh, and uh, make sure that whatever needs to be done is done. Uh, we spoke a lot about that, but also, I mean, he was not well, even at that stage, Mr. Mutenya, and I was, I was feeling very sorry for him because uh, he, was, he was really not well, he was already quite sick, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think he lost a bit of interest uh, in this, but it was important for him to what, if you can call it, carry the candle uh, of this opposition and of the RDP. It had all the potential to become, mm -hmm. to become a really strong opposition. <clears throat> now, we must assume that Swapo would not take that lightly, mm -hmm. uh, as, we, as we saw. I mean, they, uh, they, their propaganda was fierce and, uh, and uh, effective. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, unfortunately, did not work out. And then eventually <clears throat> we decided that we, we, we just kind of carry on like this, simply because we were not playing politics in the Republican Party. I mean, we were serious, but we had a lot of constraints. And the constraints were uh, most, most importantly financial constraints. Bef before we get to the constraints, I just quickly want to go back to our last national elections. Um, you initially did back President Hage as the main nominee. And then at a stage, you withdrew that support. Um, what, what happened there exactly? Uh, I'm very glad that you asked that question because I think there was a lot of misunderstanding and also a lot of unnecessary propaganda that was made of that. When, when Dr. Geinkop was in the run for the presidency uh, of uh, Swapo, I went to see him. And I said to him that we could not play any role in the election, but I want to wish him well, because I wanted to, to, to tell him that I really hope that he would win the election and to become the president of Swapo and their presidential candidate. I also had meetings with uh, some opposition leaders, and I, and I said to them, you know, what we should do, we cannot it doesn't make sense for all of us, uh, the opposition parties, to put our president forward as presidential candidates. I mean, it is actually nonsense to do that. Uh, it was done since independence, but I think, I, I don't know where it started and why it started, but it was done that way, and I think it was totally stupid to do that. So, so when Dr. Gankop was elected as, as the president, or the presidential candidate, I thought I will set the example, and I and I and I and I came out openly, and I and I made a statement where I said that I would support him as the presidential candidate. Now, unfortunately, uh, uh, my supporters and my the members of the Republican Party were very unhappy about that. They said, "But why would all the other party presidents be?" Mm available to be elected as president or stand as presidential candidates and, mm -hmm. and the only one that's not there is and that will not be there party. is the Republican Party. Mm. And we had a lot of discussions about that. And then eventually, I mean, I had to give in to their wishes. They wanted us also to be on that ballot paper. And it was unfortunate for me because uh, it, it, it seemed like I was making a turnaround. Oh, second guessing yourself, and second guessing, guess, yeah. Which was not the case. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what, was, what was very sad is uh, that then Dr. Geingob came out in a, in a, 
statement where he then said that, uh, and there was some other issues that, that uh, very few people know about, uh, a very serious fight between me and the city of Wintuk mm. that is still ongoing, where I, I mean, I was, I was, I think it was during March that year that I, that I declared my support for Dr. Gango. <clears throat> and in September, I said, no, my people want me to be also be a presidential candidate. So, uh, so I will accept that. Uh, I was not happy with that decision by them, but, but I mean, they are the people who elected me and I, 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 I would like to do what they want me to do. So, and then Dr. Gankop came out uh, when I see, I mean, at that stage, he was uh, the prime minister and I also sought his, uh, his intervention with the, the issue with the city of Wintuk. Um, and then he came out and he said, yeah, but I only supported him because I wanted him to, to, help, you. to help me out, which was absolutely not the case. I mean, why would I wait from March when the fight was already ongoing for four years until September? Um, because I could have asked his, his support uh, for, for my fight with the city of Wintuk uh, in March already. So. So that was totally, all those allegations that were made were totally unfounded. I, I basically just did what my supporters wanted me to do. But I was, I was unhappy because I felt, let us support him as a president. I, 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 I felt that he would be the right person to be the president and to bring about changes. And that is what we need in this country. And, and again, I want to come back to the point where I said right in the beginning, since the founding of the Republican Party, I mean, we were never interested in petty politics. For us and for my family, and I can only speak for my family, all we wanted to do all, all the time, even up to today, is to make a contribution uh, that would benefit the country and not necessarily a political party. Are you denying that there is a racial divide with, for instance, equitable land distribution? No, not at all. But, but I think the government is making a total mess of this. I mean, we came with our proposals uh, a long, long time ago in the you 90s did. already. Yeah. The problem is that once again, I mean, we say there must be land distribution and there's enough land available. There's not even a question about it. You don't have to, uh, to, to, to take land away or force people to sell farms uh, to have enough land available. But what the government is doing is, is uh, they are allocating the land to their, to their families, their friends, their, 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 whoever in Swapo. So would you and say our current government is perpetuating that feudal land privilege? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, what, what, what uh, Honorable Swartboy did in the South, mm. I'm not surprised. Mm. I mean, those people are suffering for how long now? Mm. And I was there, I've had meetings in Karasburg, Aramsflei, uh, Gruno, Kitmaswip, all those places. And, and what, 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 what you hear is that there are, and I'm, I'm not racist if I say this, uh, but th that's what those people say. They say, why on earth can an Obama speaking people have a farm in Karasburg when there are people sitting there who need land? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is happening all over the country. So, so the fact that the people are unhappy, and I think Honorable Swartboy came to a point where he was a deputy minister of land resettlement, but he could do nothing. Mm -hmm. So it, it undermined his position and his authority and his integrity. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that he got up to a, to a point where he said, listen, this is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not only there. I mean, it's all over the country. And, and, but we need, to, we need to tackle this issue responsibly. We, you cannot take a farm, 5,000 hectares, and subdivide it into four pieces of 2,000 mm -hmm. hectares each. I mean, you cannot make a living of that. Forget yeah. about that. It can never become an economical unit. 5,000 hectares in Namibia today with all the bush encroachment and all that, you, you cannot even make a living on 5,000 hectares. So if the people say, but we just want land to settle, that's fine. But, mm. but we are currently, as the government is, is doing, we are taking land away from people and the opportunity for people to become involved in the economy and to make a contribution to the economy of Namibia. For that farm to be mm. an economical unit and yeah, and, and I think that's a problem. We mm. have too many weekend farmers. We have too many far, uh, people with, with influence and connections to the mm. government to get these farms. 
I mean, you hear that every day. Yeah. And, and, and the government can only blame themselves. We are not at all against land reform. Uh, that need to be done. And what we need to do is, is, to, is to identify black people who can become good farmers and assist those people. Mm. Also financially, the government should assist them financially. To, 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 and also they should not just get the farms mm. and, and on, a, on a 90 hour, uh, on a lease basis or whatever. They, they, they should get the farms as their property so that they can use that as mm. collateral to get money to, 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 to grow, to buy cattle, to mm. improve the farm. But the way the government is, 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 is going on is, 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 is just unacceptable and it's going to bite us. It, it's already yeah. having a very negative influence. Um, and then they must also be honest with the people. We cannot have every single black person in this country cannot have a farm or land. It is impossible. Yeah. So, to so the problem. divide has, in your opinion, shifted a lot from you know, racial divide to nepotism and political that's divide. A problem. Yeah. That's, that's our biggest problem yes. in the country. Yes. I mean, we can, we can say it's, it's, it's a racial problem, but that is just an excuse. I mean, mm. if we come to affirmative action, if you come to black economic empowerment and this whole NIF issue that is coming up, it's wrong. It is wrong. Mm. I've been fighting for the independence of Namibia uh, as a white male. Today, mm. I've got no rights as a white male. If, if it comes to contracts, if it comes to anything, uh, uh, I'm last in the line. Mm. Um, now, I'm a born and bred, dedicated, patriotic Namibian mm. who want to make a contribution, but I, but I, I cannot do that. Uh, so I think things need to, to change, and 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 unfortunately, uh, the, the 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 most serious issue that we have currently in the country is corruption. People are greedy. Mm. I think greed is going to kill us, uh, and and we need to do something about that. If we don't tackle that problem head on, and get the anti-corruption commission to do their job, because they're not doing their job, uh, there are corrupt people that everybody knows about but nothing happened to them. And, uh, and maybe that's for another time to, to discuss that, but... Yeah, definitely, Mr. Madge, let's, let's close up. Let's look at your, your, the party's challenges and your message to the voters out there. I always say a, a, a country get the government it deserves. Our people in Namibia are too patient, mm. much too patient, and I'm especially talking our black and brown fellow Namibians. They're too patient, which is, on one hand, a good thing. But mm. when it comes to politics and what we experience now, uh, it is not a good thing. They should not marry a political party, mm. not even the Republican Party. If people are unhappy, then the only way to change things will be to outvote the mm. party that is not doing their job. And I think, I think because of whatever reason, there are too many people voting for Swapo every election and we've got serious problems currently. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, we can talk a, a whole night about uh, the problems that we have now that, that cannot be blamed on apartheid or this or that. It is bad administration. It is incompetent people in responsible positions. Um, and, and they can blame nobody else for that. So, so the people of Namibia must decide who they trust. Mm. And I'm not saying vote for the Republican Party. I'm saying you must make sure that you can trust a political party to, to take that what you want forward or mm. fight for that. Mm. But when I say that, I can tell you today that the opposition as it stands now, um, that's also partly due to the fact, and I will say it openly, that, that our elections in this country was rigged from day one. There's not even a question about that. Okay. We know that. Unfortunately, we, we, we had to, the first time we went to court was in 2004. We ran out of money. We couldn't take, we were winning that, that case, but we couldn't take it forward because we didn't have enough money. We tried it again in 2009. That gave the wrong perception about who is represented and who not. Uh, we, we can talk about uh, a democracy. Our democracy as it is, is flawed. This EVMs that we use in elections is, I mean, it must go. Mm. We must go back to... Ballot papers that can be verified, that can be mm. checked and counted by everybody. Mm. Uh, we don't need EVMs. Uh, we don't need electronic equipment. We are less than a million people voting. Mm. So all I can say to the people, and 
I want to say this to the opposition. We will not succeed if we remain to be fragmented. Mm. We need to come together, but not in a loose alliance or a loose mm. coalition. That's all we have time for, unfortunately. Thank you very much for joining us. It's so nice to have been here. Thank <laughs> you. Viewers, that's unfortunately all for tonight. Be sure to follow our social media pages for more on our opposition parties, as well as the ruling party that will be coming in in three weeks' time. SMS your comments to us at 555 SMS charged at one Namibian dollar. Good evening.